Sheboygan police searching for a 14-year-old girl, Sheboygan County primary election roundup, Shoreline Metro ridership at 18-year high. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, February 20th, 2020. Sheboygan police are looking for a 14-year-old girl who was reported missing on Tuesday. Brianna Hewitt Holland was reportedly left a note that she was leaving and took off. She has 5'1", long brown hair and brown eyes, and police believe she is still in the Sheboygan area. If you have any information about where she might be, please contact the police department at 459-3333. The Sheboygan County uh, Police and Fire Commission will meet Thursday afternoon to deal with the appointing an interim chief of police. Current Chief Christopher Domigalski is expected to become an assistant chief with the Milwaukee Police Department on March 9th. Last week, the commission discussed both finding a replacement within the department and possibly hiring a search form to find a new chief from elsewhere. Meanwhile, a notice went out to qualified internal candidates for appointment to an interim police chief position. Commissioners will discuss the process of hearing an interim chief on Thursday and will review applicants for the position. A schedule for interviewing the candidates will also be set at that time. A total of 13,315 voters from throughout Sheboygan County went to their polling locations to cast votes for Tuesday's primary election. That is 21% of eligible voters in the county up from spring primary in 2018, where Sheboygan County saw 19% voter turnout. Many of the ballots across Sheboygan County simply had the race for justice of the Supreme Court, where Daniel Kelly, Jill Karofsky knocked out Ed Fallone. Locally in the race for Sheboygan County Supervisor for District 20, it will be Mike Zimmerman and Brian Hoffman on the ballot for the general election in April. In the race for a Sheboygan elder person for District 6, Mark Hermit will challenge incumbent Dean Decker, while in the village of Random Lake, it will be Renee Rathke, Laura Mueller, Charles Mueller, and Elizabeth Kocher on the ballot for the two open seats on the school board. An often used voting resource website had problems at exactly the wrong time. The myvote.wisconsin.gov website was not working properly in the midst of the primary election on Tuesday. That site is used by voters looking for their polling places and by the clerks looking to confirm a voter ward and precinct as an example. A plan B backup service was put into play as part of contingencies for this very possibility and the Wisconsin Elections Commission will continue looking into the, what caused that problem. And Kohler Company has cleared one more hurdle in its plans to convert the 247 acres of land adjacent to Kohler Andre State Park in a, into a golf course. On Friday, the state Supreme Court affirmed that the circuit court did not err when it concluded that the process of annexation of the land by the city of Sheboygan from the town of Wilson met the statutory continuity requirements set forth in state statutes, satisfied the rule of reason and complied with the signature and certification requirements established by the state. Kohler had petitioned for that annexation, determining that the golf course would be 
would not be developed if the land remained in the boundaries of the town of Wilson. According to the court documents, Kohler had independently designed the boundaries of the territory subject to the annexation without the city's assistance. That territory, in some places, was as narrow as 190 feet, but allowed Kohler to satisfy a rule that required at least one half of the residents in the territory to pr approve the annexation. The town, in turn, filed declar declaratory judgment action to challenge the annexation. Although this clears Kohler to again move forward, a group called the Friends of the Black River Forest is actively working to stop construction of the course, which would involve taking several acres of the current state park for access and maintenance, and also require evacuation of the environmentally se sensitive dune and whale terrain of the lake shore. Friends of the Black River Forest recently got a grant to support their efforts from the outdoor apparel company, Patagonia. Sheboygan's pier, South Pier is ready for a major makeover. The pier, first constructed in 1873, has been included in a $51.3 million ap appropriation for the structure's repairs by the Army Corps of Engineers and work will begin this April. Concerns about the project coinciding with the Ryder Cup tournament pla taking place at Whistling Straits was voiced during last week's meeting of the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority. And the project will require the use of a grass area at the end of South Pier Drive for the staging equipment and materials, effectively cutting off boardwalk access of the area for many that are expected to visit or stay in the South Pier District while attending the golf event. When asked by the authority, the Corp was aware of the Ryder Cup. Planning and Development Director Chad Pelchek replied that they had been informed, but that if funding is not accepted now, then the money will be spent elsewhere. In order to remedy the situation, the Redevelopment Authority approved a right of entry document that will require the construction of a temporary walkway on the south end of the boardwalk so that users can get around. Completion of the South Pier reconstruction is expected by the end of 2022. And finally, Sheboygan's public transportation system has been working hard to improve, and it shows. As the takeaway from the recently released annual report from Shoreline Metro, in 2019, the city bus company provided just under 680,000 trips on its fixed route service, marking an 18-year high and a third consecutive year of ridership growth. Director of Transit and Parking for the city of Sheboygan, Derek Munch, credited years of improvements and enhancements that better connect customers to their destinations. Munch says that adding things like a bus tracker app that allows riders to avoid walk long waits and miss rides, and the partnership with the Sheboygan Area School District that gives students free rides has built a culture. According to Munch, since 2010, ridership on Shoreline Metro has increased by 54%, including a 13% increase from last year. And that's our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.